Hello YTPC. Um, three Rivers. I was watching a video the other day, uh, Desert Pine Piper, Jim. And if you haven't seen his channel, you need to. And I will put a, a link into his um, channel below. But we try one of his relaxing chats as always, talking a lot of sense as always. We're also enjoying a beer, which I'll come to in a minute. This is um, a Northern Briars pipe, which I commissioned with Ian Walker at Northern Briars, based on a pipe that Jerry, sorry. Professor Jeremiah smokes one of his favourite pipes and he was kind enough to send me all the details and dimensions etc and if you look on his channel um, certainly on the 100 um, video number 100 you'll see a pipe very similar to this the pipe that this was designed on um, this is what he calls a group 3 the bowl is knuckle deep, um, it's a cool smoke, it's a very very light pipe and if you want to one you just need to get onto uh, Ian's uh, website which again I'll put in the place below and um, we haven't got a, an official name for it yet but unofficially it's a professor's pipe. And in it, I'm smoking some Samuel Goweth Winter Time Flake. Please note, Flake. And when I opened it, it's the second tin I had. I had one earlier in 2019. Well, if you can see that, <laughs> it was mainly crooked. It was ready rubbed and underneath it is the flake. I, irrespective, it's a lovely smell. Cool. It's Virginia, or Virginia's, with, um, with Latakia. So a nice cool smoke, steady smoke. Yeah, let me take these glasses off. So coming back to, let me just fire up again. Excuse me. So I was watching Jim's production and he was having a libation call for Oni. Interesting brew in as much you can keep drinking this stuff and you, it has no ill effects on you whatsoever. Not in my experience. Most of you, or many of you, or maybe not at all, that I wrote a book called the yeah, Three Rivers Adventure. But in my previous life as a fly fishing instructor, I used to take people on guided tours fishing the rivers up in the borders of Scotland. So that, this book's based on that. And it enables people to organise their own fishing trips but it's more than that it's someone says to me is fishing all about catching fish no it's the camaraderie it's the adventures the escapades all the things that you get up to that happen to you the people you meet the places you go so this is a little bit of history in it it's an escapade but it's all true but one night my first night I was up there with a good friend of mine Shane. Hmm. I were going fishing the next day and generally I like to type, you know, depending on what the weather's like, it's at a time it all flies. So on this occasion I tied what I call my SJ Emerger. It's in the boat. That's what it should look like. 
Well, fortunately, from about the time of three o'clock in the afternoon, only stopping for lunch and a bottle of red wine with some lovely venison, and then back onto the brony. It's getting near midnight, so I haven't tied any flies for tomorrow. So that's when, having had all those peroni, I tied the peroni fly. It was probably more akin to this than what it should have been. I, I do have a tremor. Most days it's bad, some days it's terrible. Um, so, with Jim's inspiration, I tied this earlier. I, I'm not going to put you through the pain of watching me. But I will. Try and describe what I've done. That hook is a B100. 14s and 16s. And then on it, touching turns, I use uh, primrose silk. Touching turns all the way down, as you can see, there's a bit at the bottom there that's not dark. And you say, well, it's, it is different, so it's dark, yeah. I coated it with cobbler's wax. But I hope this is at this end before I tie it back up. But I always leave a little bit there as a trigger for the fish. So I'll tie it back up. And then about three eye hook depths back. I'll tie in some deer hair. And ideally, you want that deer hair about half body length sticking out behind the hook the hook bend there and then two eye hooks back I put in some coloured canard feather it's from the preening gland of the duck it may be covered in oils but the thing is it's very buoyant uh, but the main thing is all those barbules trap little bits of uh, bubbles of air so, as you can see, it's concave. So I put three feathers that way, three feathers that way, bunch them together, then um, pinch and loop method, which I've used for the deer hair in that feather, I tie them in. Or as you can see, hopefully, when this is in the water, this, the body, is below. So that's a bit of fish see. A nymphal shuck coming up to the top, emerging into an ephemeroptera or upwing fly. And then I finished off at the end there. Bit of glue, for a dog. There's your finished fly. I would normally call that the SJ Emerger. But it was born out of a fly that Gwilym Hughes, my old mentor, tied. And he won the Rivers Championship on the River Tweed with it, and he called it his Calder Cannon. It's based on the Greenwell Glory. And another international, this time not a Welsh international, but a Scottish international called Ronnie Glass I was speaking to just a few weeks ago. He won that same Rivers competition on the Tweed several years later using again a very similar fly to this. But mine's unique as is Ronnie's, as is Willem's, but they catch fish. So I hope you don't mind Jim. Um, I thought I'd just jump on and say hi and um, just thank you for your productions thoroughly thoroughly enjoy them so take care and god bless god bless everyone bye for now